So I just had a comment about verbal abuse. Calling women whores and prostitutes at the pulpit is a form of verbal abuse. I would just like to say that if you did not know. If you had a daughter, would you rather have your daughter walk on the street half naked with a breast hanging out? Of course not. I mean, I, I'm Why a not? Woman. What's up, YouTube? Poor Man Podcast back with another video. Give me the HBO special. That's the Help a Brother Out special. Hit the like and subscribe button for more content. Let's get right into the video. From Yaden. What's going on, Abby? Hi, Mr. Harris. How are you? Amazing. We have Pastor Gino Jennings here. Yes, and I heard Thomas that he was making a good morning, Pastor Jennings. Good morning, Gino. Good morning. Okay, now let me ask you this, if you don't mind. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in the Bible, God states, come as you are, right? No. So, Can I interject? Okay. Wait, I didn't no... cut you off. Wait a minute, please. Okay. Be little, you know, yes, ma'am. Show little respect, okay? Now, I'm just asking you. Do do you see, like, where, where she I'm asked the question, so he was kind of supposed to interject there, but... They don't have a dress, or somebody pins his sag. Okay, for instance, an inmate might just come home from prison and when it comes to your church. Mm -hmm. They give him a brown inmate jacket. And they, they say, you know what, I want to get my soul saved. I know I've been living right. I want to come to Christ. If that's all that man has to wear to church, and he comes up in your church, you're going to refuse and tell him he can't come here because he's just getting out of prison? No, you accept him as he is because you don't know who you're passing by according to what you see in your eyesight. That's judgmental, and God didn't judge anyone. First of all, we don't turn no one away when they come to church regardless of what they have on. Uh, and from that perspective, that's not even what I'm dealing with. That's not, uh, that's not what I was dealing with even when I was teaching. What I'm dealing with is the way our women look today who already claim they're saved. We're not dealing right. with anyone who only have one piece of clothing to wear. The stage of the churches today, if you go into churches, regardless of practically any church, a Christian woman and a woman that's not saved are not supposed to look the same, act the same, be the same. Exactly. And and that was one of the problems that I had with church in particular. The people who were a part of church were doing the same thing. And I noticed this as a kid. I'm talking about I was very, very religious when I was seventh, eighth grade. I've read the entire Bible. What kid do you know in seventh, eighth grade reading the entire Bible? I've read it about three or four times. I was ultra religious at one point. But then I started to notice that the people that were in the church were doing the same things as the people that were outside of the church. Then I asked myself, why are people identifying as Christian if they're not doing things or even trying to do things according to the Bible? And I learned that a lot of people identify as Christian just so they can virtue signal. And I see it happen with other religions too. A lot of people identify as Muslim, but they eating pork, they cursing all the time, and they're not conducting themselves in a way that a Muslim probably should according to the Quran. Um, and so as I seen that as a kid and I seen nobody taking accountability for their own actions, a lot of people would try to pray away their accountability and people would do things throughout their lives. And instead of using the church as a way to continue to be accountable, people would try to pray away all of the things that they did wrong. And when you pray away the things that you do wrong, you don't have to take any action. So I would see all the time people doing things and because they can just go pray and ask for forgiveness, they would never really fix themselves. And I didn't see a lot of people developing into better people. So I, that's when I kind of started to distance myself from that from that environment. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. So if old things have passed away, not only my character changed, but my appearance should change. Explain to me why would any decent woman want to walk the street with her breasts hanging out? Why is it all right to do? Why would any decent woman want to walk the streets with shorts? So short, everything in the shorts is out the shorts. Facts. I, what is so sense. decent about it? To have your 10-year-old daughter, your 12-year-old daughter, your 13-year-old daughter looking like a prostitute. What is so decent about it? What is so decent about the women half naked in the club and you come coming to church and they look the same way on the choir, on the uh, playing the instruments, being ushers? What is so decent about it? You mean to tell me we're living in a society that's upset with me because I'm encouraging our women to put clothes on? Exactly. That's the height of ignorance. It's a lot crazy. of women are calling in and they're mad because they're like, you're only going at, and I know you, you talked about this earlier, you touched it earlier. Mm -hmm. What what do the men, what, what do you say about the men and their parents and how they act? I Before he gets into that, I want to say that that's universal. Anytime you hold women accountable for anything, you're going to be seen as controversial. Even if you're telling women, hey, just put more clothes on if you want to be counted as Christian. It says in the Bible here, 
to be modest. You'll get backlash as a pastor, as a spiritual leader for telling people you should dress more appropriately before you come into the church. That's insane to me. What are you even going to church for if you're not allowing your pastor to pass judgment on you? He's supposed to be closer to the model you want to become in the future. If he's not allowed to tell you the things that you're doing right and wrong, then how are you ever going to expect to get better? That never made sense to me. So at some point, we lost that accountability in the church or the church lost that accountability. And I think it was in the somewhere in maybe the mid 2000s when the church seemed to be more about money than it was about the people in the church. Oh, we'll accept you if you do this or we'll accept you if you do that because we want your money on Sunday. We want that tithes and offering. And if we say we don't agree with your behavior, you are more you feel more shame and you're less likely to come to the church. So we're just going to say we accept all behavior as long as you're paying that tithes and offering. And you could just go ahead and pray, your, pray away whatever you're doing. I am very adamant about the men when it comes down to respecting the women. We believe that the man should respect the woman. Do not verbally abuse the woman. And don't, by any means, beat the woman. You can't even stay in our church if you're physically beating your woman. Mm -hmm. We believe that you should be arrested. And you should be locked up. If you're going to have a child by a woman, have enough decency to take care of the child. These seem like good morals and standards today, to me. They're making babies. But it's not even in them. It's not, they act like it's not even in their character to take care what they have. Right. So a lot of these women are what? They are single mothers, and they have become mother and father. And yet these type of men, many of them, still go to church. And these type of issues are not being addressed, period. So no, we encourage our brothers, by all means, don't be out here with your pants hanging down, showing your drawers. I, I, we're living in a society where this is so norm, to see grown men. Hey, man, when I came up, man, our, our pants was up. Facts. Our underwear, that's why it's called underwear. They should be under your clothes. Facts. I mean, these are all facts. We have, uh, Kay, I know, Kay, you have a couple questions. I haven't heard break. anything wrong I yet. I haven't heard anything. Verbal abuse. Calling women whores and prostitutes at the pulpit is a form of verbal abuse. I would just like to say that if you did not know. But what are your uh, female clergies, what do they think about your, your remarks about women? The women, I have mixed reaction internationally. There's a lot of women that agrees that, yeah, well, he's calling a spade a spade. But you have... Or degrading. Do, do women find your remarks degrading? Oh, yes, some find it degrading. How about uh, you, Kay? Do you find his marks... It, it marks really degrading? doesn't... Uh, well, my opinion would be, I don't want it to, you know, degrade you or say anything that would offend you, but I don't care what he thinks. So it doesn't matter Whoa. to me. Well, see, I respect that. She don't care what I think. Okay. But let me ask a question. Uh, do, do you have a daughter? I do not. You don't have a daughter. But my mo my grandmother, may she rest in peace, is uh, she actually led the women in ministry, Leslie, Lillian Fry Webb. Okay. Uh, if you had a daughter, would you rather have your daughter walk on the street half naked with a breast hanging out? Of course not. I mean, exactly. I, I'm, Why not? Well, I'm then there you go. Certain morals and values, so I know how to dress. I know when is appropriate, what not to do. But I think that if you're going to judge a woman and she's in, uh, she's at your church and she decides to go there, and then you're criticizing her and demeaning her, that's not a no, form of helping someone. Uh, basically, I, I I totally disagree. Criticism, there's constructive criticism. Constructive that, criticism is one thing, but to criticize and demean is different. Well, if you calling an individual by what they project to be, how is that demeaning? That is not by, demeaning. By how they dress? How do you know what they are on the inside? No, basically, I am not it's saying always that, that inside. they are a because of the way they dress. I'm talking about it is the appearance. If I came in here, let me make it a good example. Okay. Again. Uh, again, if I came in here and rings on every finger like the bling bling preachers and had my hair process hanging down, you know, and mm -hmm. this loud blood red suit and mm -hmm. purple shoes and an apricot shirt we and a bright yellow tie, would you really believe I'm a man of God or would you believe I'm just a straight up pimp and just went in church business? To pimp. I'm gonna think you would be exactly. a pimp. Exactly. Let me ask you something because we have B Expo coming up next Sunday. I mean next Saturday. I, I hope you can come. Uh, it's fifteen dollars. I mean I think you have that money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> tickets you can get them at rnbphilly.com. We have I'll be sure, Christopher Williams, Dougie Fresh, Roland Martin, Ernest Pugh, mm -hmm. uh, and we have Erica Campbell. Okay. Er Erica Campbell's on our sister station Praise 107.9. Mm -hmm. She she does mornings as well. And she, you know, she's a gospel singer from Mary Mary, and mm -hmm. she dresses like this. Do you have a problem the way 
Erica Campbell, a woman of the Lord, dresses. Well, if I uh, didn't know that she said she was a Christian, by looking at her clothes hugging her body, I wouldn't think so. I saw how... how That's just calling uh, a spade a spade. staring at that uh, <laughs> <laughs> picture as well. I, I wouldn't think she's a Christian at all. As, if a woman is modest, she's not dressing in a manner that appears to be sexual. Like she's drawing sexual attention to herself. A woman's body is sacred. The Bible speaks plain. Your body is the temple of the living God. He talking. And if our body, whether we are man or woman, if our body is a temple to, for the living God, then we should conduct our body in that manner. And when we walk in a public and people look at us, our women should not be on display. If you look at advertisement, what do they show you to get the product first? A female. Exactly. To buy a soda, you got a female in a bathing suit. He's to get a car, He's you spinning. get a female in a bathing suit. Our women have been displayed as looking at a sex object. So therefore, when they buy things, they think it make it look sexy. Listen, God made you to be beautiful. And you don't have to go to Walmart to buy it. Speaking exactly. of beautiful, we have the B Expo. It's going down. I'm, this is just, it's a, it's a lot. We, we have A breaking point for me for church was this i was going to a church for about 18 19 years and when i say i was going to a church it was mandatory in my family that means you were there on sundays you was there on wednesdays rain sleet or snow and we in minnesota so it was a lot of snow if you was dead you'd be in there as a corpse and for going to sleep in church i would be grounded until the next sunday church was very mandatory in my family but one of the breaking points for me was the the pastor that was the leader of the church had a first lady that he'd been married to for decades there was a woman that uh came in she was a drug addict and she needed a lot of help and they helped her collectively the first lady and the pastor fast forward about a year the pastor divorces the first lady and then marries the woman that they helped rehab because he had been sleeping with her and i'm not saying you have to be perfect as a pastor i get it everybody's human but if we're giving you money because you claim to be the messenger of god there are certain mistakes that you just have to be very careful of or you're going to lose a lot of respect he lost all of my respect and pastor gino here this is what it means to be a great pastor standing on your moral compass no matter who says that you're wrong for doing it jesus christ wasn't liked and it's because he stood on his moral compass. Even when people were out being amoral, people were just doing whatever they wanted to do. Jesus stood, still stood on his moral compass regardless. And I feel like the church lost that a lot. A lot of pastors, when their integrity was tested, when funds got low, they began to pander to single mothers and tell them anything that they do is okay just so they can continue to get the money. And to me, that was the, that was the last straw show the ultimate lack of integrity if the church wants to ever make a recovery i think it's going to have to prove very heavily that the integrity is back till next time